What are we up to? Well, we spent a bit of time sort of digging. It didn't take us long, actually, to decide what we were up to. Let's be honest. This is the guy that's curator of the show. This is Ram Coolhouse. He's the man, and he's been the man for a long time. He's cool, he writes, he draws, he's got an army of people with him, and he's an icon maker. Um, the CCTV building in Beijing, for anyone who's seen it, they'll know that you, know, you drive around it, it takes ages, and it's staggering. Um, he wonders if modernism has invaded the world. In other words, have all the lovely architectures of China and India and Peru disappeared in the wave of uh, modern, uh, modern architecture. His requirement for this show is that it deals with fundamentals, not architects, although he's an architect very aware of himself. Um, fundamentals of the last hundred years, that is to say since, um, since the 1914, the beginning of the First World War. And as everybody here will know, those wars have had a huge influence on not just architecture, but pretty much everything else in this country. This is where it is. I hope you can see the picture. It's not dark, but it's sort of getting there. <clears throat> it's, 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 the, it's the antithesis to anything that we do. And don't we love it? I mean, no cars. It's just utterly wondrous. And it's fantastic to do something here. Um, where we are, incidentally, is um, some of you will know, but not all of you, that, that, that the Rialto Bridge is on the corner of the river, of the canal, the Grand Canal, uh, in the middle. And we are just out to the right a bit. That's our palazzo. It's pretty hard to see here, but you know, it's kind of, kind of in there, Rialto Bridge, the white lot, the, the Rialto Bridge, the white lot on the left, uh, the big hospital, there's the big square stuff up on the right. So it's, um, it's in the middle of Venice, all right, <clears throat> and it's called uh, the Palazzo Pisani uh, Santa Maria, San Marino, Santa Marino. And of course this, which was once, I suppose, the front door, is now the cart dock. This is where we would love the walker to, to come up with the, with the minister after he's given us all this loot that we're after <laughs> and unload him into here. But in fact, you enter from the other side, um, and you enter a room, which is this one on the, on the right, which is about 17 meters long, and five wide, and, and five and a half high. It kind of varies, it's five and a half wide at one end, but that's Venice, nothing square. And uh, we admire it, but we're not going to kowtow to it, I'm afraid to say. This is us. Where are you? Now, please come out. This is, this is our gang. Please come over here. <clears throat> because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the marvelous business of sitting around a table um, arguing about this damn thing with no time left to go that makes for the most thrilling <laughs> experiences. <laughs> <At the l> <clears throat> Julian Mitchell. Craftsman builder for a long time until he got sick of all the architects around him and did an architecture degree and is the principal of our office. <coughs> Charlie and Sarah Lee, who is um, an absolutely marvelous um, architect, drawer, academic, who's doing a PhD and um, working on this job in our office too. And then um, young architect and, and surely the hardest laborer in the office. <laughs> Yes, um, <coughs> Claire Nartouche, um, who also speaks Italian. Then there's Julie Staff, who's shared my life and work for the last 30 years, about which we need to say no more. <laughs> Mike Austin, professor of architecture, uh, and a person who's studied Pacific architecture, um, traditional Pacific architecture, for a long time. Uh, Jenny Pedlo, who's another principal of Mitchell & Stout, um, currently doing uh, the Hastings Civic Centre, uh, plus this, plus a few other things <laughs> exhausting her. 
Francis Cooper, who you'll hear about a little later, who's a, a graduate architect working at Athfields in Auckland, and um, and also a, a, a very big prize winner uh, in, in, in last year. We'll tell you a bit more about Francis, whether she likes it or not. <laughs> Ro Hoskins, who you know about already, uh, Design Tribe Director, uh, teaches at Unitech, uh, and you will remember, many of you, I would think, uh, Whare Māori, the series on Māori architecture in, uh, on Māori television. And finally, but by no means least, <laughs> Rick Pearson, who uh, is the most experienced uh, exhibition designer and the, uh, I would say the best architect who's, who's experienced in all this stuff and is an absolute godsend <laughs> to the rest of us. So thanks very much. That's our lot. Uh, we start here. We couldn't resist the corny line of Kipling. I mean, last Auckland, last loneliest, loveliest, exquisite apart. I mean, there's not an Aucklander who doesn't want to cry. Uh, and um, it doesn't fit the picture, but, but we like it. We really like it. Um, the picture is to Paya's drawing, the first drawing, in fact, of an exchange between Māori and Pākehā that there is. Uh, Te Paya was taken on at Rangiatea uh, in Eastern Polynesia and brought with by Cork, and he was a kind of high priest, navigator, uh, translator, who, who, would, who, who could understand Māori when he came to New Zealand. And Cork put together the course of the settlement of the uh, Pacific. You know, he speculated on this. It seems to him that these people have come from here to here to here. Anyway, we love this picture and give and take has been going on for pretty much ever here, hasn't it? Um, when de Sanson, who painted Paroa Bay, and I'm thinking, I've looked it up, you know, is this the Bay of Islands and why is there snow on the mountains? <laughs> But anyway, this is, this is, you know, this was a typical Maori settlement in the 1830s. We are going to not just deal with 100 years, but give a brief snapshot of how New Zealand has got to this country because we don't expect Europeans generally to know much about it. Um, anyway, there was no architecture here as far as most people who were European were concerned. Uh, and and Hurst Seeger even said so. Uh, turn of the century, no architecture in New Zealand, in, uh, in the Architectural Review, I think it was. Um, and so it was only natural that uh, in the memorial to the war dead of the First World War, this building of Amor Draffin, and um, I, I always forget, uh, who's the last bloke? Um, uh, was the thing you built. I mean, it was a monument, it was a classical monument. This is 1929, it sounds awfully late. There are still boats in there up to, uh, up to the Strand and Parnell. And it contained, uh, as, as anthropological artifacts, uh, buildings and other things that were Maori, of which this, uh, uh, Te Puya Tupuwai, O Te Araha is perhaps the greatest particle still in existence, this one down on the right. Um, and the, here is the, is the gigantic and important distinction between the European, which relied on mass for rigidity, right? think flying buttresses, you know, not bits of wood stuck up the side of a church, flying buttresses, mass, permanence, a permanent world that did not move, of course, uh, and um, and this, which is made of temporary materials, wood, you know, rods, uh, but is actually an end moment in 4,000 years of Pacific settlement. I mean, this is the great touching thing about it. it. This is the great unsung architecture of the world, or at least to my mind, it hasn't been elucidated until Mike Austin sort of alerted me to it. And, Julie and I sailed around the Pacific and saw these damn things and reenacted 
uh, uh, to Pyre's drawing at remote Pacific Islands. Um, these buildings, which are made of poles and, 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 and frames and panels, and which are resilient but decay, are everywhere, uh, everywhere through the Pacific and have been 4,000 years while the settle settlement pattern happened because architecture is like language. And so the Austronesian people who came from where Charlin, uh, you know, originated in Taiwan, where Charlin in our office now working on this project comes from, um, brought this architecture across the Pacific um, just as they brought the language. And this is the thing that we're going to deal with. Um, and we found out more about it while we sort of thought about it, you know. What's been wonderful is that exchange, the crossover, the give and take that the Tupaya drawing cued us to. So here is Tukoti. Uh, this is actually a, a marae that he instigated and thanks. In, it, it's near Tequiti, some of you may know it. Um, it's a classic, it's a classic uh, marae as, as, as we tend to think of it. And this picture on the right is Aparana and Ata at Waitangi in 1940, leading a haka. Uh, and it's, to my mind, one of the greatest pictures ever made of life in New Zealand, I suppose. So there was a crossover, and uh, some of you will know the church in Otaki Rangiatia, which is, is, is church, but is also seems to be like a meeting house. So there's a lot of to and fro -ing. And some of you will know the Ponsonby Church of Dick Toys, which looks like a far away, but isn't. Uh, and this building, it seems, among New Zealand architects, they all end up settling on this. This is, somehow or another, pulls it all together. So this is where crossover gets uh, sublime. John Scott, the Turner Chapel, 1959 to 61, Opened in 61, built by the brothers, the Marist brothers, in honour of a, of, a, of a slaughtered saint from Fortuna Island, which is an outlier north of Fiji. Uh, Marist brothers, uh, followers of Mary. Uh, inside, uh, dark and wonderful. Uh, and John working down some sketches on the right. <coughs> some have asked whether he did the sketches afterwards. <laughs> we just, it's like, what does it matter? But you know, he knew about it, of course. He knew about, he knew about Fare, and um, he thought about them, and, and he loved the great, the great sheltering roof, which is this tent pyramid you see in the middle. His moment of genius was to turn it, uh, was, to, was to flatten one side, which is like that, and make this extraordinarily powerful building. And, you know, you can't have a, an exhibition of New Zealand architecture and going through the middle of the century without having it, whether it fits or not. Fortunately, it fits. But it's part of a, it's part of a very rich moment mid-century. Mid Bruce Rotherham's house, currently for sale, by the way, its, it's interior, I understand, unprotected. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the finest building in Devonport by a long shot. Um, it did things that we hadn't done before. Light things, sticky things, resilient things, specific things. And um, it, it features big with us. Cold and thin, but terribly wonderful. Uh, also here, if you can, if you can get a focus, uh, a house at Bosley in, uh, at uh, Motorua Island in the Bay of Islands on the left could there be, this house goes for, you know, forever up the, up the slope. And, and we only have a taste here, but we'll have much more of it. And it's, um, it's sitting on the thinnest and spindliest of structure. So elevated roofs, wood, the pavilion, the pavilion. And on right, uh, Lance and Nicky Herbst in, in, in uh, Piha, um, the tradition continues. It's, it's gone through jobs that we've done and uh, Patrick Clifford's done and through here, uh, and, it, and it keeps going, and I, I think it's a great tradition. 
uh, he, he, here we have the same attitude, really. You know, it's a pavilion with a thing underneath it, a sheltering roof. Uh, architecture workshop at Waitomo Caves Visitor Center. And then we have Christchurch, and one of them, you might think that it's a terrible thing to have to do something all about pavilions and face the fact that Christchurch has had a great architecture in the mid-century and also had an earthquake. Um, we're going to deal with this. I have just written an email to Miles. I haven't quite signed it yet, Warren, Miles Warren, Sir Miles, saying, Miles, I know that new brutalism started in England, but the Japanese also had a version and it was constructivist about detail. And I think I can see it in your work. And when it comes to Peter's work, Peter Bevan's work on the right here, well, I mean, it's Japanese woodwork, isn't it? Made out of mass concrete, incredibly clear. Uh, and so I say this panel and pole and stick and pull together thing is part of a Pacific tradition. It's not actually more English than the English. Well, unfortunately, we have to ask whether the end of Englishness has come to Christchurch because um, this building is in trouble. This is an Athfield Architects building post Christchurch, 18 months ago, using post tension timber as a new, resilient, and thoroughly Pacific way of doing things. And now we jump to the last three things. We've got a sequential show, basically. The last three things. Um, Francis Cooper won the Global Architecture Graduate Award last year, the biggest award in world student architecture, 500 entrants from the best architecture schools that there are. And she came from up the hill and she's in our team. <laughs> And she, she, she nibbled Wynyard Wharf away. <laughs> That's pretty well what she did. She slotted it and fiddled with it and put, put Rousseau's forest in it and she interceded with all sorts of things and did everything she could to avoid iconic architecture. And she illustrated it with the most superb graphic skill in an island dump of what she'd dug out, out in the sea, which, which now is yellow. Um, the second big event that happened, and these are, these are going to be signal moments in this show. Uh, Shigeru Ban's Cardboard Cathedral is a significant event in world architecture, and only a bloody fool <laughs> doesn't honour it, particularly since it's a Pacific building, quite so obviously. It, it weighs almost nothing, and it's made of sticks and, and plastic infill. And the third one, you can just look around. Here's the European, the mass building. Here's the Pacific Pavilion in which we stand and, and, and up through which you look to the park. Um, so it's right there as well. How are we going to do it in here? Unfortunately, we, if, you've got, if you're an artist and you've got a bunch of pink bubbles, you can stick them in the middle and they look terrific at an old building. If we've got this stuff, you know, it's not so easy. And we don't want all that light and all that sort of courtyard and downpipes and everything, so we're not doing that. We're going to hang a tent, which is not allowed to touch the walls, right? Mm. Heritage building, can't, can't bore holes. You're allowed to put screws in the ceiling, beams. We're going to have it hang a tent in the middle of it, and this tent, which will have slight gaps every now and then, which are, which, those gaps being being rafters, uh, and is this tent a house or a faray or a tent? It is something you can think about for yourself. Uh, but it's basically made of the absolute minimum. Um, and it has in front of it a new, newly carved partica. It's actually a fatarangi, which is a one pole partica rather than a four polar. Um, and uh, Tristan Mahler is carving it at this minute. I hope he is. Tristan? And inside it will be um, a model of the Auckland Museum. Um, because that's, you know, how we can now view um, the, the Grecian experience. Um, beyond it, the tent will have um, 
the work we want to display, and it will start with uh, the, the Pacific Settlement contact and one panel that will just give you the give you the picture if you're an Italian or whatever, and it'll move through key moments that we see in this specific architectural experience, and it will finish uh, with a um, with an oceanic backdrop. It will not be a picture with clouds scudding by. Nothing will be um, will be what do you call it, um, computer literate, nothing's computer literate here. We walk across a car, uh, we see the Christchurch work, the great mid-century Christchurch work before we leave this, which is, you know, the great tragedy of Christchurch. It's, it's a tragedy that, all of it's a tragedy, but the mid-century work of Warren and Bevan is truly a tragedy if you're an architect. And um, you will revisit it using Viewmasters, remember that? The first app, you know, um, stereo. Uh, we don't want a lot of smashed buildings all over the wall. We want a private experience and it will involve walking over a carpet of Christchurch in the before and after situation which will be a disturbing experience but not as disturbing as walking across Christchurch is the Christchurch people. Uh, and then we will have um, the, um, the cardboard cathedral left there and this building on the right, and in the middle we will construct, we're desperately trying to make it at the moment, a, a, a post-tensioned timber, timber tower, which is using the optimistic future resilient technology that the Athfield building um, tries to use and which Canterbury University Engineering Department is pioneering uh, to make a little sticky tower with a reflective lid on top. With Francis's models and scheme uh, on it. Um, so those are the three things we finish with, the really staggering thing that this building, one World Architecture Festival World Building of the Year, I mean, and this was the World Student Scheme of the Year. So, so there couldn't be a better moment as far as I'm concerned for um, um, doing the show. Thanks very much.